Welcome to another exciting Bible study with Reverend Dr. James A. Duncan, pastor of Shiloh Baptist Church. Faith study in the Word is designed to keep you fired up about your walk with the Lord. Fired up about our faith study in the Word with Pastor Duncan, author, teacher, and long-term educator with a burning desire to see every believer live a full life of faith in the redeeming power of God. This can only happen when we develop a hunger and thirst for studying the Word, God's Word. Thanks for joining us in tonight's study. Good evening, good evening, everyone. I shall family. How's everybody doing? I want to welcome you to our evening Bible study class titled, uh, the theme is Stay Fired Up About Your Faith. Amen. This is our ministry series where the Lord laid on my heart and gave me the title, It's Time for Healing. I am Pastor Gary Mack, one of the associate pastors here at Shallow Baptist Church, one church in two locations, where our senior pastor is Dr. Reverend James Allen Duncan. I am truly excited what God is doing in our life and giving us the opportunity to bring forth His Word. I'm so excited what God has placed in my spirit, and I can't wait to get dive into this. But we're going to go into a word of prayer. I just want to welcome you to the Shallow Baptist family again. I want to say hello to our senior saints, our youth, and all in between. God bless you. I love you. I miss you. And we we'll also for our first time listeners, Olin, maybe listen. Please subscribe to our Shallow Baptist. Uh, SBC Praise Church on our YouTube channel. Also, we're live on Facebook. We ask you to join us. We pray that you turn off that stove, pull up a chair. We got a word from the Lord for you today. Amen. Let us bow for a word of prayer. Dear eternal God, our Lord and our Savior, we want to thank you, Lord, for this opportunity. Lord, I thank you, Lord, for the people that you have placed in my life. Lord, I thank you for the guidance that I receive. Lord, I thank you for the teaching that I receive, that now I've been given an opportunity to spread the gospel to the world. Lord, I ask right now that you intervene, you would take full control over me. Lord, you know exactly what your people need. You know exactly what they're going through. You know that every pain they ever heard. And we pray right now that your will be done in their lives. Lord, we thank you in advance for what you're going to do. So right now, God, I ask you to prepare their hearts to receive what thus said the Lord. God bless you. Thank you all for that prayer. We're going to go right into it. I'm very excited about this class because this is what the Lord laid in my spirit after all that we've been going through. You see the title here is It's Time for Healing. I don't know about you, but uh, I've been through too much and God done brought me too far to turn around now. And I claim my healing right now in the name of Jesus. And one thing I want to want to do right now. I want to, I want to um, do a declaration real quick. I want you to look at the board real quick. It's time to heal. Uh, we, in all these disasters, the events that we have in the day with the pandemic and, you know, all the other issues, racial injustice and all that, people are really hurting. But we don't want to talk about just that surface hurt. We want to talk about that deep hurt, that one that affect your relationship with your Lord and Savior. I just want to take my time here, but before I do that, I need you to join in by faith. And what we want to do, I want all the saints. I know you're home. I know you said, I don't feel like standing up. But if you would stand up in your house today, right now, and let's just do a declaration unto the Lord. Okay? Just do a declaration. This is a declaration. Stand up on your feet. Give God praise. Even in your home. Let, let the devil know I'm not ashamed to praise God in my home. I might not be in the church, but God has been good to me, and I'm going to give him praise no matter where I'm at. I know somebody says, oh, man, I'm sitting on the house shoes, I ain't moving. Yeah, I'm talking to you. Come on, get up. Let the devil know that he's, he's defeated. He is a defeated foe, and God gets all the glory to all of us. The declaration is, I need you to stand up on your feet and say these words to me. Say, I am healed through his word and by the power of God. That's a declaration. That's something you need to get in your spirit. Because some of the things we're going to be talking about today is going to be pretty rough. Because we've been service hurt so long, we don't forgot about those things that are deeply rooted in us, those root causes that prevents us from serving God to our fullness. We have lost our influence. We have lost our gift, our, our anointing that used to follow us. We used to love to pray. We used to love to shout. We can't go to church now, but we can still give God praise right where you are. 
Don't let the devil steal the joy of the Lord from you. Amen? And one thing I want to, I want to start with is that we will be talking about some several things that may be challenging to you. Somebody might say, well, why now? Why do you want to dig up these deep things that I've tried to hide for so many years? Well, I'm going to tell you right now, the reason why I want to dig them up because it's affecting your worship. It's affecting your ability to reach the loss. It's affecting your ability to, to give God your best praise. And one thing we need to do, especially in these last days, because of what we've been through, we need to give God everything that we have. We hold it to him. Amen? All right, we're going to go on over brother. All the same. This is declaration. See it right there? I am healed through the word and the power of God. My supporting scripture, as you've seen on the first slide, is coming from Psalms 107, verse 20. But here I have verse 1 and 2. I would like to start with that if you don't mind. And it states, Oh, give thanks unto the Lord. This is David, Psalm from David. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good. David recognized God was good because David had been so bad. And we can all relate to that. David had been through some ups and downs, some challenges in his life that he had faced. Some not caused by him and some he did cause. But David realized in his writing, he wanted the listeners to hear this. That God is good for his mercy. His mercy that me and you share is eternal. It's, it's forever. God don't judge us according to our actions or our deeds. He loves us. He cares about us. And his mercy covers all of us. And that's something to give God praise for. Amen? It says, his, for his mercy endure forever. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. We take this verse so lightly. We, we use it in church as a cliche. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. But let me tell you something. After what I've been through, my 54 years experience on this side, and how the devil tried to trap me and tried to take my family from me and all the obstacles that he threw before me and I was still able to handle them because of the power and the grace and the love of God. I have a reason to claim my redeemed power. I am redeemed. So I'm going to say, I'm giving God praise with everything I have. I've been given another opportunity to stand before you with this mic and be able to give you back the word of God that he gave me. And I'll tell you something, that's something to rejoice about. Because the Lord chose somebody like me. I, I don't want to stay there. I can stay a long time for my testimony. But I'm going to move right along. This is a, a supporting scripture that I want to focus on. Which is uh, Psalm 107, verse 20. It says, he sent his word, my God, my God, and healed them and delivered them from their destruction. He sent his word. Who is his word? We know now, today, we can relate to it. That word is Jesus Christ. He sent his son. God sent his word to heal them. We can be perfectly clear on what this means for us today. St. John 1.14. You know verse John 14, the first verse says, In the beginning was God, the word was God, the word became flesh. The verse 14 verse says, The word became flesh. Talking about Jesus Christ came flesh and dwelt among us. Jesus spent time on earth to kind of figure out and see the things that we go through, the challenges we have in life. Now I understand when the Bible says that he understands our moans and our groans. When we don't know what to pray for, when we don't realize that we hurt it so bad and all we can do is get on our knees and say, mm, the Holy Spirit can read that and register to God. Because Jesus has been down here and know all the trials and tribulations and the temptation that man has to go through. Jesus is the word. He sent his word, his written word, to heal them out of all their destruction. We're going to get to that later. But I want to go over kind of outline of what we're going to be discussing this first week. we got three weeks, and I'm just asking you to tune in because it's going to get better and better. I'm excited about this, where God is taking us. But before we get to the deep, into the deep, into the deep. Why is it time for healing? We need to know what are some of our hurts. Here's some of our hurts. Some hurting areas. Medical, you may be sick. You can relate to that. Somebody might be sick in your family. 
or hospitalized or on some medication because of their sick. Rather be mental, mental yes. issues, that's very, that's very prevalent right now, especially with this pandemic. This COVID pandemic has affected all of us. Here's a country, a nation have been shut down over a pandemic and it affects each and every one of us differently. Some people were winning off of this pandemic because their stores are open, they're able to deliver people food at home, their pockets are being filled, but there's some people who have lost loved ones. They have died and gone on through this COVID-19. Some of them don't have work, the economy. There's another way, your finances, no money, no jobs. You're waiting on your stimulus check. So am I. <laughs> Racial and social injustice. These are some things that causes pain in our life. I, 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 we, we, we're going deep. I need you to listen to me carefully. Try not to move too fast. But I'm excited where God's going to take it because God always got a ram in the bush for all of us. And we can give God praise for that right now. These are some other things. Our faith, our belief system, it's been challenged because a lot of the pain and hurt that we've been going through. It's time for healing right now if you don't know. Real quick before I finish these up, I'd like to tell a story. Um, it was this young man that brought his father to career day uh, to his school. He was a single parent, he lost his mother, and his father finally got a chance to come to school with his son. I need y'all praying right now because this was a rough when I heard the story. It brought tears to my heart. And he was so excited, his dad made it to career day. His dad was right there, he's looking back. His son is in the class looking back. Dad is there, I can't wait to get up and tell him about his job. His dad had a good job and he was doing well, even though he was a single parent. And he was just so excited. And before his father got up, his father was gonna be next. There was a young lady there, his uh, uh, schoolmate. Her father was a police officer. And he was up telling his job how he uh, served the community, how he loved his community, and how he, his job was to serve and protect. And you know, everybody applauded when he got done because he was saying, uh, giving his own self accolade, which was good. Hey, it was his career, it's what he enjoyed doing. That's what he signed up for. And, and the, the young man was so excited, he said, my dad's next. And then after that, the teacher get up and do a little intermission to introduce the next one. But before she got up to introduce, the father walked out of the building. He left. He didn't tell his son he was leaving. And he went in the parking lot. And lo and behold, the teacher got up to introduce the next student, the, well, the next parent for career day, and it was his father. And she mentioned, he, she mentioned his name, and they looked around and said, where's Mr. Jones? Anybody see Mr. Jones? He was just here. Where, where is he? Lo and behold, they had to go on with the program. After it was all over, school was over, his son seen his dad in the parking lot because his dad was going to take him home after that. He said, Dad, where were you? He was crying. He said, Dad, I was so excited. You finally made it to school, and you disappeared on me. He said, Son, I, there was something going on in my mind and my spirit that I never told you. He said, when I was your age, my father got pulled over by a police officer. And all my father asked the police officer was, what did I do wrong? What did you pull me over for? And he said he heard gunshots and has seen his father no more. What, what am I saying to you today, church? I'm saying there is some pain that happened when you were younger and your child life that hurt you so bad that affect you from being the man that God has called you to be. You thought you put it to rest. You thought you put it to bed. But here is a pain that when he was a child, his son age, a fifth grader, when he was around his son age, He's a grown man now, had a wife, got children, got a good job. But that disturbance in his life caused so much pain. We can't go farther. We can't serve God. We won't survive if we don't learn how to deal with that hurt that nobody wants to talk about. We can preach, we can shout, we can dance all we want in church. But if we don't deal with that, that seriously hurt, that deep down root cause hurt, we can never be effective like God has called us to be. Relationship issues. Now this is for all ages. 
but I want to make sure I mention the young people, the young adults, because that young boy was young. His dad was young when he got traumatized with all that pain. And what did it do? He still moved on with life. There was no inner peace. He was disturbed and he needed healing. And guess what? You need the healing too. I don't know what you're going through. You know what you've been through. The weather, not the weather, man, but the weather has gone crazy. The environment, environmental, global warming, and climate control. We must be totally honest and clear to ourselves. We are in desperate need for some healing. Can I get an amen? Can I get an amen? I want you to know that the devil is not the only one to trip you up. We're going to go into this. But you also trip yourself. Because when you don't learn how to trust in God and continue to fight the good fight of faith. The Bible tells us that the enemy comes for one reason, one reason only. And you find it in John 10.10. 10. It says, the thief comes not, but to steal, to kill, and to destroy. That's his role. That's what he comes to do. And the deep thing we want to talk about is not the surface stuff. Oh, I'm, I, I smoke weed, I drink, I get high, I, I steal. No, 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 no. We want to talk about those root cause issues that led you to steal, to drink, to want to do gamble, do all these things that were hurt other people that love you. Well, one thing I, 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 I have to confess I need help on is I, I'm able to give, give good advice to people. I'm a good listener. But I struggle to listen at all. <laughs> so when I'm talking about hurts, there's some things that cause me not to be able to listen to things that go on around my home and the ones that I love. There's a root cause of that. There's a trauma that happened in my life that made me not a good listener at home. Uh, we're, going to, we're going to discover some of those things as we go along. This is just the intro, y'all. I am so excited about where God has taken us. I thank God for the opportunity, but there's a lot of groundwork that needs to be done. I just need to be patient with me. I want to slow off this thing because your life is important to me. What you're going through is important to me. And guess what? God's word, I mean, he sent his word. He wrapped his word up in flesh. Not only that, he wrapped his word up in prophets and, and preachers and leaders that he had appointed to be able to bring forth the word of God, to be able to set the captives free. Luke 4, 18 and 19. For the spirit of the Lord is upon me and has anointed me to preach the good news to the poor, to bring something that can heal them from right where they are. The captive, the blind. It's not talking about the physical ailments that we like to relate to. Oh, my back hurt. Oh, I got a headache. No, I'm talking about those things that make you don't even want to love the ones that love you. Don't even want to, can't even enjoy when everybody's smiling around you. You have a smile on the outside, but you just, you have a disgust and anger and bitterness on the inside. Oh, yeah, I'm, I'm coming to you. I'm coming to you because the Lord came to me. He set me free, and he's setting me free. But there's some changes I have to make, and I found out, I discovered, the only way I can be healed is through his word. Through his word. I love God's plan. The enemy came to steal, kill, and destroy, but I love God's plan. He, he said, I come that I might have life, and that they might, they might have it more abundant. How many want abundant life? You can raise your hand right where you are. I want that abundant life. But guess what? You got to put the work in. There's some things that you have to do to be able to get that bond of life. Jesus Christ already done his part. You have to do your part. And that is receive the word of God. Amen? The biggest lie the devil has convinced us to believe. This is where it starts now. We're talking about hurting. But guess what? This is where it started. The devil has convinced God's people these very things. That God doesn't care or love us. I, I need you to hear me. Say it God. He has whispered in our ear, the enemy, to our spirit. Because you know what? He don't care about your flesh. He knows your flesh is going right back to the ground in which you came. You know what he's attacking? He's attacking that root cause that I want to talk about right now that we're going to be discussing in these next three weeks. The enemy is after your spirit. Next week, we're going to be talking about the difference of the soul and spirit. 
They can be used intertwined or, or you know, they can be used pretty much with the same meaning. But I want to give you a clear distinction of the difference. We're going to cover that next week. But right now, I just want to get you through this. The enemy don't care anything about you. And he has convinced not the world. He had the world. God's people. He has to convince us that God doesn't love us. And God doesn't care about us. And he also convinced us that God can't heal. I'm going somewhere. Stay with me. Stay with me, please. No, this is what he plants in the mind of God's people. I didn't say the world, in God's people. That's why we struggle in our relationship. That's why we struggle in our job. That's why we struggle in our worship and our praise. Because in our spirit, man, we wrestle with the lie that the enemy has planted. And because things don't go our way, we start trying other avenues. Let me try this. Let me see if this will work. But I come to tell you, this is one of the reasons here. Because the devil knows that we view death as being the end. Can I take my time there? The hardest thing anybody has to deal with, I, I'm losing a, a, a parent or a husband, spouse, or child. That kind of covers the whole ground just about. Could you somebody child, could be somebody other than white. When somebody you love die, especially unexpectedly, you don't have to tell me that the first person we get mad at is God. You, you don't have to tell me that. A 14-year-old boy who lost his mother, you don't have to tell me who the first one you're going to be mad at. Because when you've seen your mother suffering, or whoever it may be, your father or loved one suffering, and you prayed, you might not have known how to pray, but you cried out to God and said, Lord, heal him. We take death. I don't care how long you've been in church because I don't, I don't been to a lot of funerals. When I've seen the saints of God, I've seen pastors and ministers and lay leaders minister the word of God over somebody else's loved one. But when it came to them, it's a different feeling. And ain't nothing wrong with that. I weep with you. But sometimes we forget that death is not the end. Death is the beginning. And death has ruined a lot of people's spirit. That deep thing that I'm talking about right now that we want to discover, that deep thing that really rakes you of your praise, rakes you of your, or who you are, your character, your integrity. That pain of death. Because for a moment, until we get back into the Word of God, we view death as the end. And those who are saints of God know the Word of God, know Absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. We don't want to get out of time today. Keep moving. You gotta keep moving. These are some things that the devil whispered in our spirit. Why didn't God answer your prayer? I prayed. He didn't answer. I did he? You trusted. You served God. Look at the bad results you received. Still got cancer. Still struggling with a disease that we don't even know if there is a cure to. If, if you see the first page I had, that was a picture of my grandson. He was one years old, turned two. He was in the hospital. And my grandson was born blind. He's nonverbal. And he wasn't expected to even walk or do anything. And here I stand and testify 12 years later, next month he'll be a teenager. He's still with us. And an enemy had been trying to attack him because he couldn't get me. He couldn't get his grandmother. He's going to go after those that you love. And hear me, saints of God, that's been the enemy's plot from the beginning. If he can't get you, he's going to go down your street and going to pick on something that you love so much and so dear that you keep close to your heart. And he's going to try to make their life miserable. But I come to tell you that no weapon formed against you shall prosper. You got to know the word of God. You got to know that our God is a healer. He knows everything that we're going through. And if he plays somebody like my grandson in my life with his disabilities, I can tell you, I don't have enough time to tell you about all the abilities that he do have. That boy can do things with his foot that I can't do with my hand and toes. He's amazing when it comes down to doing things. But one thing I love about his spirit, 
He's always smiling. I've never seen him cry much. And that gives me hope. When I feel like giving up, when I'm walking down Walmart to get him as a gift for Christmas, and a grown man breaking down, crying, and walking down the aisles of Walmart because I have a, a grandson that's blind and can't see, and the gifts I want to give him, I long so much for him to be able to see them and know what they are. You talk about hurt. When somebody that you love gets hurt, it affects your praise. It affects your worship. It affects who you are. You can smile all you want. You can put on that facade that everything is good because of your title, who, what your role may be. But every now and then, you need to get in the middle of your floor and cross your legs and gather your hands together, your children, and tell them about your pain. Release them from the bondage that is coming their way or they already experiencing. We don't miss it with a kid. Make it up with your grandkids. Tell the story to both of them. I'm talking about that hurt. We can't go farther. You can't get through this pandemic. You can't get through all the stuff that's going on in the world until you find out what's hindering me. What's holding me back. The Lord birthed in my spirit this title. It's time for healing. And the time is now. Where's your God that loves so, love you so much and want to heal you? Want you to heal Where is the God of John 3.16? For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten. The enemy taunts us with the word. The word is supposed to bring us healing. The word is supposed to open our blind eyes. The one that's supposed to set our, cap, our captive spirit free. The enemy is using this against us. He's taught us. Where is 3 John 3 16? Where is 3 John 1 and 2? Love, I wish you all things that you will prosper in health, even as your soul prospers. Your spirit, man. Taught us. I beg you different. I, I, you should tell that devil, let me give you one. He cares about me. He cares. He loves me. He know everything about me. There's nothing God don't know. I can go to him any time, any time of the night. I can call on him. And he would answer me and show me Jeremiah 33 and 3. And show me mighty things that I've never seen before. We need to run the devil of this future. These are the topics that I'm going to be speaking about this week. That was a little intro, but we're going to get right into it. The first time we see this one. We're going to talk about the urgency of healing. The time is now. The types of illnesses that prevents you from serving God like you should. You need healing from. The third one is going to be covered all through the three weeks. Uh, biblical foundation truth. We know that we need to know the biblical foundation truth of how we get healed, how we stay healed, how we remain free. Free. The Bible said, "Who the Son is set free is free, free indeed." Amen. 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 Uh, biblical foundation truth to support your healing process through these three classes. Next week, we're going to be talking about, real quick, we'll go over this spiritual healing. You need to get that. Please tune in to us next week. Our inward man made whole. We need to know when God heals, he heals us from the inside out. Amen? Our faith nourishment, our belief system need to be strengthened. Man of God, woman of God, we're suffering in that area. We, we don't even make moves by faith. We, we're talking just like the world. The world said everything is going down. We need to say, uh-uh. If God be lifted up, he said he will do the drawing. Everything can come up if you connect it to God. We need to be excited about what God is doing in our life. And we need to stick with the word of God. The third thing is, for the second week, is better heart condition. Our compassion. We have lost our compassion for others. Here in our churches, we are kingdom people committed to building the kingdom of God through faithful worship. Yes, our first obligation is giving God everything that we have. But our second obligation is how we serve others. Right now, I'm doing service. I'm giving the word of God to be able to bring some encouragement to your spirit. we got to realize that we have something to offer those that are hurting. Our testimony, the Bible tells you, oh, come out of blood and lamb and the words of our testimony. We need to know how God thinks about what he thinks about us. The Bible says, be ye transformed. Be ye transformed for your healing. Our third class, we're going to talk about mind protection and control. 
Romans 12, be transformed by the renewing of your mind. And then when your mind gets ready, you got to learn how to control it. Because one thing is leaders, those have been called with a heavier task. Sometimes we can lose sight of what God really called us for. He called us to be example, not just to carry forth his word. I was sitting in the office with a, a friend of mine that well, I just led to Christ, a good friend of mine. And I thank God that he was listening to me all those years as I talked about the Lord. He finally gave his life to the Lord, and now we have some great conversation. He, realized, he don't realize how much he really helped me from the things he shared. And one thing we're going to be talking about here, you see in the Bible, is that the second thing is communication and application. Good versus bad information. We got to make sure that we deliver the word of God correctly. We can call we lead people down the destruction road if we don't deliver the word of God correctly. Information, bad information can hurt people. So we got to make sure the application, the application that we lay when it comes down to God's word, we got to make sure it's coming from the word of God. Also, you got to make sure you're excited about it. Don't come telling me that God can heal you. You're talking all with no, no energy, no enthusiasm. Oh, God can heal you. Oh, he'll do it for you. I want somebody excited to say, you know what? I was in the pit. God plucked me out. He put my foot on a solid rock. Now I can run. I can shout. I can make it. Yeah, I'm still having some of the same issues you may have. But the God that I serve has redeemed me from the hands of the enemy. And I am excited about what he's doing in my life. you got to be excited about what God is doing. And, and the last one, like I said, a friend of mine at work, receiving your blessing. He gave me a story that I want to use. Yeah, I, I, I'm creeping from him. He said his son uh, was always struggling, and every time he would come over to the house, Dad, you know what kids do. They, they want something from their parents. Our job is to give it to them when we can, but also we have a message to give him. He said his son used to always come over, and Dad, I want this. He said, but this one Christmas, his son came over and said, Dad, I want to take you out to lunch. He said, no, no, keep your money. He said, he was thinking in his mind, you know you're going to be back and get it else soon. But he said, he said, he bought him a little small gift. And he said, I'll open it when you get over, son. And he came over to dinner and everything. He never did open the gift. His son said, Dad, when are you going to open the gift? I'm here. He said, oh, okay, go get it. I forgot all about it. And he said, Dad, every time I try to ask you, let me take you out to dinner to buy a burger, you always refuse. He said, you don't know how that affected me. He said, I know all you've done for me. I know the sacrifice you made for me. But can't I buy him a dad a hammer? He said that thing tore him up so bad because he haven't learned how to receive the blessing. Can somebody give God a praise right now? We gotta learn how to receive a blessing from God. His son needed that more than his father thought he did. He said, if I could just do something, for my father. I know I can't compare dollar for dollar, man, but at least I can buy him a burger to show how much I care. These are some of the pains that our children are going through. And so are you. You're grown. You got gray hair. And you're still wrestling from through childhood pains and scars that are still resonating. Receive the, your blessing, true salvation, and healing. Ecclesiastes. It is a time and a season for everything. And what I love about this text is verse 3. It is a time to heal and a time to heal. And a time to break down and a time to do it up. Real quick, the author of this book is unknown. Some contribute to the son of King David, Solomon. It doesn't really matter. It's in the word of God. And Ecclesiastes is unknown. It is actually the book is Kohila, which means translated into preacher. Meaning that God uses people to carry forth his word, to send a blessing, to speak a blessing out to us. And what I love about Ecclesiastes chapter 3, God is showing us unity. We always looked at it as a time and a season for everything. But God was showing unity. He said, what I found to be very interesting in chapter 3 of this book, that God inspired man to write and, and the readers and the hearers of his word for us to listen to it and read it. God was showing us in this text, if we can just work together with him, everything will be just fine. In this book, Ecclesiastes, it's a time to kill, it's a time to heal. It's a time to plant, it's a time to uproot. 
There's only some things that God can do that you can't do. Only God can do it. Here's a few things here. Here are some of the things that only God can do. Control time. You see, it's time for healing. Only God can control time. Genesis says, God created all things. And he controlled from the beginning to the end of time. We know God exists before time even exists. God has full control of it. You can't do it. You got nothing to do with that. Also, God gives life. Before you and Jeremiah, look at Jeremiah for a chapter. Before you entered into your mother's womb, God knew you. He knew exactly what you were going to be a girl, a boy. He knew who you was going to become. God already knew you. God gives life. This is the only thing God can do. Take life. This is what I love so much. John 10 and 18. Jesus said, it is, No man taketh my life from me. I lay it down. And if I lay it down, Jesus said, I got the power to pick it back up. That same power. You, you, you got anointing and authority that God has given you to do certain things. But God said, in Ecclesiastes, If you can just work with me, if you can just work with me, everything would be just fine. The things that you can do, please yes. A time to plant, a time to uproot, a time to tear down, a time to grow. Second Corinthians chapter 10. Cast down, cast down all imagination. This is something you can do. God gave you the ability. When that negative thought comes in your mind, when you feel like you're giving up based on what the enemy has threw at you or your past hurt or that root cause of pain that you don't want anybody to know about, you got to dig that thing up. You got to know every time the enemy tries to distract you, when you're on your job, when you're doing your fellowship at church, wherever you may be, you got to know that God gave you 2 Corinthians chapter 10 and 5. Casting down all imagination and every high thing. The devil ain't after your flesh, he's after your spirit. And that's what you need healing from right now. Anything exalts itself up against the knowledge of God. He's coming against everything that God told you. His mission is to kill, steal, and destroy. But Jesus Christ, I came that you might have an abundant. Here's that abundant life, but you gotta know how to work it. God gave it to you. Bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. Here's another one. Judges, building up. Here it is. Time to tear down, time to build up. Judges 1 and 20. It says, but ye beloved, building up yourself in your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Spirit. Sometimes you got to you got to quit all that, Lord. Uh, bless my roof, give me over roof, clothing and shelter. Uh -huh. You got to get in your spirit. You got to preach. You got to pray from your spirit, and you and God on one accord. He hears you and know everything you're going through. You emptying yourself because you're praying in the spirit, and God says, "I got you covered." But when you get up off your knees, you got to nourish your faith. You got to trust me. When all you have, even though it don't look like you're winning, even though it don't look like you're going to survive from this, even though your loved one did pass, God said, guess what? I got greater things. He said, eyes have not seen, ears have not heard, neither have it entered into the heart of men the things that God has prepared for his children. That's something to be excited about. That's the healing we're going to be talking about next week. So I need you to tune in with us. I need you to join in with us because God is doing something exciting. He wants to heal. Yes, your anger. All these things. I, I, I got to move on real quick. I got to skip past this. I want to show you something real quick. And I'm close with this. I need healing in these areas. Death, when I lose somebody, you can't accept that they're gone or why your prayer didn't work. Your relationship is a big area with the one you love or the one you want to love. Relationship. You don't know how to communicate with your wife or your husband. We keep dancing around giving God praise and we suffer in this area. And God sees it even though we think we're doing his work. I'm talking to you and I'm talking to myself. These are the areas that Lord, don't cover them up. Lord said, don't cover them up. They affect so many people and you got to talk about it. You can't find a mate. And for some, the mate you have, you don't even want that. These are some of those hurts. Like I talk about the young boy in the beginning, his father, the pain that he went through. He was grown years, went on with his life, but it was still something that bothered him so bad. 
He lost his father to a police officer when his dad only said, what did I do wrong? Those are some of the pain. Somebody might have stepped in your life or harmed you or touched you, did something that you even don't even want to talk about. I don't want to talk about it on the air, but you need to take it to God. Because God said, you can't go to that next dispensation in life in service. Closing in this, what did we learn from the shutdown? We should have learned how to listen more. We should have learned how it don't matter about our clothes and worship in the church. What did you learn? I learned how to listen more and how to dig deeper for those things that affect my relationship with God. I'm going to pray with you right now. I'm going to close it. You need to surrender and lay it at his feet. Yes, I'm talking to you right now. That anger. You're fun to be around with others. But hurting those that are close to you. My wife, she's probably cringing right now. I said, what is he going to say? I just want to say, I'm sorry. It starts with me. You'll do anything for me. And most wives will for their husband. And sometimes all we need to do is say sorry and mean it. God had to bring this hurting thing to my, in front of me, to my, in my fruition, in front of me so I could examine, so I could teach others how to unleash that pain. I don't know what you're going through with it. Next week, me and you, and we're going to discuss a little further. Father God in heaven, I thank you for your word. I thank you for your people. I thank you, Lord, for the beginning process of opening our heart to receive healing from the inside out. Lord, I've been struggling too long. And Lord, I know only your word, according to Psalm 107 20. For you sent your word and healed them. Thank you for sending you healing. David was praying for those who, you gave them a place of rest, and they disobeyed your word. They went against you. You allowed hardship to come in their life. But every time they pray, according to Psalm 107, David said, all the men might pray, he was encouraging them. Don't forget what God brought you out of. So I thank you, Lord, for all you've done and all you're going to do in our life. We love you, Lord, for when you've taken us, set us free from this hurt that we have been going through. It's time for healing, and the healing is now. God bless you. Don't forget to subscribe. Shout out to the SBC Praise Church and view us online. Amen. God bless you. Until we meet again on Pastor Aaron. Take it to him and leave it there. I was down with no way up and I needed some help. Everybody Breathing but not living, just existing Well, and I needed some help Somebody told me that Jesus will set you free I tried it for myself and now